Yeah, so let me start by introducing myself. I am Suparna Banerjee. I'm a cloud solution architect at Microsoft UK. And if you want to connect with me, here are all my um, social media profiles, LinkedIn, GitHub, and X. And I work in the Power Platform area. And in today's session, I am going to talk about integration between two automated testing tools of Power Platform. The first one is the Canva Subtest Studio, and the second one is the Power Platform Pipeline. Lines. So as we know, when we are doing the deployment of the Power Platform solutions from one environment to another, it is better to go with the automated uh, deployment approach with the Power Platform pipeline the in product tool provides us. And before moving the solution, it is always advisable to complete your testing. Now, if we are doing this testing in a manual way, it takes time and effort. So if we go for the automated testing, it makes our life easier, the life of the developers easier. So for this automated testing, in Canvas app, we have the Canvas app test studio that allows you to record your test cases and play it back. So if we want to combine these two automated tools together, Power Platform Pipeline and Test Studio, natively that option is not available. But I am going to show you how you can integrate this together. So when we are deploying it from my development to test environment using the Power Platform Pipeline in between, if we can push the automated testing process and based on the result of the automated testing, the deployment will move forward or not, that will be decided. So let me start with a demo of the Canvas App Test Studio. Here for this demo purpose, I have built an app. This is for submitting a travel request. And as you can see, I have multiple fields. And here I am going to uh, validate two test cases. The first test case is the date validation where I'm validating if the return date is greater than the uh, departure date. And if that is not true, if the validation is failing, I will show one exception message. The second is the purpose failed that will be having at least 10 characters. Again, if this is failing, a validation message will be showing, which you can see there are two labels that I have added here. So my test case will be checking if these two labels are showing up when the criteria are not meeting. So for that, I have opened this test case. From the left-hand side, we have this Canvas Subtest Studio link. I have opened it, and here I can either manually create a test suite and a test case, or I can create the test suite and record the test inside it. So that is what I'm going to show you. I have just hit the record button, and then I will perform the steps that the actual tester or the user will be doing. Here I am submitting a new request and providing the, all the fields, this traveler name, destination, contact number, departure date, return date, purpose, all the fields I'll be filling up, and I will be checking whether the validations that I want to show up here with the those are coming or not. So here I have already filled a few fields and you can see in the left hand side it is recording all the steps that I have already done, selecting uh, the new record button and then setting the value for the uh, this travel and name destination. And now I'm putting the departure date and the return date. So I can see that when the return date is less than de the departure date, it is showing me the validation. The same thing if my purpose field is less than 10 characters, again, the error message is showing. That means my app is working fine. Now I still have one uh, error message and it is not allowing me to submit that. Let me fix that and after that we'll see if I'm able to submit it. So here, here what I'm doing, I'm recording the happy path, how it will go and before doing that, I'm checking if the validations are working fine. So now my test case has been recorded and here when I come, I can see all the steps with the actions. The actions are basically the power effects formula. The for button click, it is simulated by the select statement. For every uh, input, it is simulated by the set property. And here, all the fields are hard coded. So I have the name, travel and name. Uh, they, everything is hard coded here, but that I don't want. What I want is uh, these values will be coming from some table. But before that, going to that, I just want to show you when I publish this test case, how it is getting automatically played. So now here I'm not doing anything. It is getting played automatically. And now let's go to the scenario where I am storing all the test data into a table. 
So this is my table travel request test data, and I have two test cases, and against each of the test case name, I have all the test data prepared here. So my objective is when I will be running the test cases each time of the deployment, it will be fetching data from here and will populate into all the fields. Now, how we'll be doing that? If I go into this travel request test suite and click on this view button, I can see there are multiple uh, uh, events there. So here I have created two test cases. One is this check length of the purpose field and second is validate date. Against each test case, I have one row and when I will be going to see the events for which is associated with the test cases, there I will be able to see what the code I have written there. So let me just go on to that view. And uh, yeah, so this is my first test case check length of the purpose field, and here I am in the view. And on test case start event, the first thing I am doing, I am doing a lookup into the travel request test data table and getting everything and storing into the test data object, which I will be using for storing means getting the data there. So to use this table, I need to first add this table as a data source in my canvas app, which I am testing. And I can see that now I have got the data into my lookup table. And then after this data collection is done, next thing I'll be doing, I'll be changing the hard-coded values to the object value which is coming from the table. So here we can see that I'm getting the traveler name, destination, contact number, everything from this uh, the test data table. And the most important thing where I'm doing the actual validation, this is the assert statement. So here, this assert statement, this is basically uh, checking. It is doing the, an if statement. Inside this assert, I'm using an if statement. So we can add an insert step uh, below with this assert statement. And assert is validating if the thing that I'm looking for, like the length of the purpose data card value is less than 10, whether my validation error message is showing or not. If it is not showing, that means my test case is failing. And if it is showing, then, then my test case will pass. So it is very important to add this assert statement after all the steps where I'm populating the data to make sure I am doing the proper checking. Now to get my second test case where I'm doing the validation, I have just copied that and I have added an, another assert one. So here the data set is different. It is coming again from the data table, test data table, and here I'm to adding the assert statement to checking check if this is coming fine the date uh, this date validation now we have seen the on test case start event the next event is on test case complete when the test case is getting completed we are collecting the test results into this TC1 result value. So what data we are collecting? We are collecting the start time, we are collecting the end time, the result, and if there is any error, that error message, everything we are collecting and formatting in into this variable TC1 result. The objective is we will send this result in an email to the some space predefined email ID. So you can see that the next one on test suite complete, I am sending this through Office 365 output look connected to a predefined email uh, as the test case results. When this automated test will be running after the completion, we need not do anything manually. The person who is defined here, they will be getting this result uh, in their mail and they can decide what to do with that. Now I am going to run this test case. Before that, I want to show you that if the test case fails, what will happen? So intentionally, I am making one of my validation. I'm just commenting out one of my validations for the purpose validation field. I'm removing it and checking what will happen. Is it forcing my test case to fail or not? So here I'm just commenting this out and making this visibility false. So this validation message, it will never show up. So it will make my test case to fail. And once this is done, I am going to just save and publish my app. And after that, we'll be running the test cases. 
So let me just get my app published and then I'm going to run this from the, from the player itself. We can run this test case or if I want, I can copy the play link in the top right side. You can see there is an option for copying the play link. That play link, if I just paste it in the browser or if I send it to someone else, they will be able to play the app using that copy planning. Now I'm testing using it during the, my testing time and it is it has started running my first test case, which is uh, checking the valid purpose field validation, the length of the purpose field. And in the left hand side, I can see for all the against all the steps, there is a green tick. That means all the steps are getting passed. And now the next step, the important part is coming where we're adding the SR and we can see that it has been failed because I intentionally made my app to fail this and now it started the execution of the next test case validation date and I know that it will pass because the necessary code is there. So in real life scenario when we are moving the app from any other environment or just doing the unit testing if we run this we'll come to know whether all my scenarios are passing or not. So this is how we can uh, execute automatically play the test cases. And here is the email that I added into my um, in the test case test suite complete. It is sending the automated email with the uh, the first one the fail with the failure message and the second one is a successful. So there is no failure message. So I am getting as a admin I am getting both the emails. Okay, so now let me move to the next part which is how we can integrate this test suite link with my Power Platform pipeline. So this is my Power Platform pipeline. I have created this demo pipeline and I have linked the two environments with it. One as the development environment and another is the target environment. And here inside the QS, this stage, I have made this pre-export step required to true. So that means before exporting my solutions to uh, from my development environment, I have the option for extending the pipeline with a power automate flow, which will be executing my logic. So if you are aware of the extension of the power platform pipeline, you know that there are uh, various stages. So here the action name, you can see there are these are the various stages that we can add and where we can execute some logic in the Power Platform pipeline. Here my stage is on deployment requested as I have selected that pre-export step. And then I am initializing a variable with the test suite link, which I will be providing it the same link that I showed you earlier, copy link, what I did for the copy link. That link, I'm storing it in the, in, inside the same solution where I have added this flow for extending. And in the solution, there can be multiple Canvas apps. So there will be one row associated with the solution name for each of the Canvas app and along with the test suite link. Now I am getting this test suite link based on the artifact name, the solution name, and then updating my uh, variable with the test suite link so that I can create an approval action where I will be sending this test suite link to the admin and will uh, that will allow them to run the uh, this test suite before approving the this deployment to QA stage and so that they can just approve or reject it and they can control the movement of the solutions from one environment to another. And here you can see that I have uh, just mentioned that a deployment has been triggered for the solution. And here inside the item link for this approval action, I'm providing the test suite link that I got from the uh, table where I'm storing it against the canvas app, which is inside the solution. And then finally, for this condition, if the outcome is equal to approve, then I am using this perform and unbound action. If it is a but uh, this uh, it is approved. That means I'm changing the pre-export step status to 20. And if it is rejected, then I'm changing this pre-export step status to 30. So if we just look into the documentation, we will come to know what does this mean? This 20 means completing the step. If in my flow I am marking the status as 20, that means it is approved. It can move to next step. If I mark it as 30, that means I have rejected the deployment and it will not move forward. So 
Now let's see what is what is going to happen when I start the deployment. So I am into one of my uh, solution and I am just starting the pipeline and I can see that when I click the deploy here button, it does the normal checking. It is asking me the deployment schedule. I'm doing it right now. Then it will do all the validation. And when I hit the deploy button, it will start the exporting, but I have the pre-export step required, so it will not do the export at this moment. Rather, it will trigger the Power Automate flow that I showed you right now. And let's see the running instance of the flow, what happened here. So if I say it, I will be seeing that this flow is running and it is waiting for the approval. Yeah, so we can see that it is waiting in the stage where it is uh, it is requiring the approval and if I look into my email, I can see that I have re received that approval request. I am I have put my email as the approver and it is telling me that you deployment has started, but you need to go to the state suite link. So the admin wants to click the state suite link, it will automatically start executing. The admin's responsibility is just clicking the state suite link. They can go away from the desk. They need not monitor this. If there are lots of test cases, it will be completed. And once it is completed, the admin will be getting the email with the consolidated result. They will be reviewing whether all the test cases has been passed or failed, and based on that they will decide whether they're going to approve the approval task for the deployment or reject it. Now uh, I have seen that there is one failure, but as an admin, I am deciding to approve it. So once I hit the approve button, I will have the option for submitting and entering the comments. And you can see that this is pending. So at this moment, it is not moving forward. So I am just hitting uh, approve and I am not putting any comment there, rather submitting it. And once I approved it, it is moving forward. So it is currently deploying the version. So now I can show you that with this deployment, I have ingested one step in between where we have the automated testing option and it is means based on the result of that automated testing, we can decide whether to move forward or not. Uh, I have uh, put all the summary here. I don't know whether these decks will be shared with you or not, so you can get all the steps from here. And other than that, I have documented everything in my blog. So this is the link to my blog and this is the QR code. If you want to learn more about that, you can go here. Mm -hmm.